15 years ago, Amy and I got married. We dated for three years after our first date when Amy was a sophomore in college. My name is Mark Butler. Amy and I met at a party and instantly became a couple, inseparable until I graduated from high school two years later. We separated during Amy's senior year, after which we planned to get married. About six months after we got married, we were at a party with several other couples our age. It was a BBQ with grilled steaks and lots of drinks. As the evening wore on, the crowd dwindled to just us and three couples sitting around a fire, drinking and talking. The topic of celebrity hall passes came up. What the hell is a celebrity hall pass? I asked. Sadie, the little blonde to my left, spoke up. Celebrity hall. Pass is exactly what it sounds like. This is a game we play where you name the person you want to take a break from your marital vows for. You know, the celebrity you're allowed to have sex with. So you guys are just playing this game? Yes and no, Sadie said, patting her husband on the leg. Yes, this is a game we play. But Tom and I agreed that we would give each other one hall pass. Not necessarily with a celebrity. I was shocked. For real? You mean you guys have a standing agreement that you can have sex with someone else whenever you want? Tom looked me straight in the eyes and laughed. That's right, buddy. He pointed to the other two couples. They have the same agreement. We all agreed that same evening. Katie, you used your hall pass, right? Katie lowered her head. Tom, you don't need to tell the whole world about this. Yes, I was at a conference and working with this nice guy whose wife had just died in a car accident. I called Carl and told him I was going to use my pass to help the guy. Amy was silent but moved closer to me, holding my hand. Carl, did you mind that Katie had sex with another man? Oh yes, that suits me. She returned to my home, and someday I will be able to use my pass. They continued their game of naming who would be their ticket to the celebrity hall. Amy pushed me to name someone myself after she announced hers. Fifteen years later, I couldn't remember who each of us chose. But I remember the hot sex we had when we got home. Amy even admitted that when we made love, she imagined her fantasy lover was with her. The next morning I made it very clear to her that I would never agree to a hall pass. Amy agreed that it was just a game. The events of that night have largely faded from my memory. We continued to live our lives. Amy and I quickly started a family and had a boy and a girl. Amy and I kept in touch with Sadie and Tom for several years, but lost track of them after they got divorced. A couple of years ago, I ran into Tom at a bar. I just happened to walk in after work and saw him drinking alone. We drank while he told me that not only did he and Sadie get divorced, but two other couples from that barbecue also got divorced. The main reason for every divorce was a hall pass. Tom said they each believed that the hall pass would allow them to experience excitement outside of their marriage without having any impact on the marriage. Tom said they couldn't be more wrong. After everyone used the pass, comparisons and suspicions arose. Suspicions led to disrespect, which led to divorce. My conversation with Tom confirmed what I thought the night at that party about the hall pass. This can be a fun game to play as a fantasy. This doesn't work in the real world. I was going to tell Amy about my run-in with Tom, but due to our busy lives, it never happened. Sitting here now, I regret not doing this. It was Thursday evening while Amy was at a conference in Los Angeles. Around midnight, my phone rang. Amy was calling. It was noisy, like she was in a club. I could tell from her voice that she had been drinking. You won't believe it, but we met Joshua from my soap. He likes me and I'm going to use my hall pass. The noise became louder. What did you say? Did you say something about using a pass? Yes, honey. I knew you would understand. See you on Saturday. What? What the fuck are you talking about? Can you hear me, Amy? The call ended. I quickly tried to call her back, but her phone went straight to voicemail. I left her several messages asking her not to do anything stupid. I sent her several messages telling her there would be consequences if we broke our wedding vows. After hearing nothing from Amy all night, 
I tried several times in the morning to no avail. Friday was a terrible day of not knowing what was going on with my wife in Los Angeles. I took the kids to my parents' house after work. I headed towards Jack's house. Jack's wife Jenny went on the same trip with my wife. They worked together and were good friends. Jack met me at the door, surprised to see me. Hey, Jack, I need your help. I can't reach Amy. When she called me last night, her voice sounded strange. Can you call Jenny to see if she knows anything? Of course, Mark. I'll call Jenny and tell her that you're here looking for Amy. No, don't tell her I'm here. I'm afraid Amy will ask to cover for her. Just call her and mention Amy in conversation and let me listen without her knowing. Of course, buddy. They should have finished classes just now. I don't know what made me do this. While Jack took out his phone, I turned on the voice recorder on my phone. His wife answered after the first ring. Hey, honey, you must have ESP. I just returned to my room after class. We're having dinner tonight and I'll see you tomorrow. They talked a little about the conference. Then Jack started talking about Amy. Have you seen Amy often? Mark called me, leaving a message asking if I'd talk to you about her. Damn, don't tell him you talked to me. The last time I saw her was last night. We were all drinking when this hot soap star came to our table. Amy got his autograph and they danced a few times. We were sitting at the table when Amy said something about how she and Mark had an agreement to get into the hall. The soap star quickly jumped up, volunteering to be her past couple. I tried to talk her out of it, but she said that such an opportunity comes once in a lifetime. The next thing I remember was her walking arm in arm with a guy leaving the club. I haven't seen her since then. God, don't tell Mark. Jack ended the conversation, looking at me. Sorry, brother. Do you guys have an agreement on admission to the hall? No, we played a game called Celebrity Hall Pass many years ago, but then I told her in no uncertain terms that I would never agree to such a thing. What are you going to do? I don't know, but it won't be good. On the way home, I stopped by my parents and asked my mother to leave the children for the weekend. She saw that something was wrong, but I didn't tell her what it was. When I got home, I tried calling and texting Amy several more times, but to no avail. I assumed she had turned off her phone so she wouldn't be disturbed while she cheated on me with her soap star. Amy's flight was scheduled to deliver her by mid-afternoon. Amy is dropping Jenny off. So I asked Jack to text me when Amy drops her off. I set up our video camera on a shelf in the living room so I could come face to face with her. I wanted everything she said to be written down. At four o'clock, a message came from Jack. I had about 20 minutes. I took the camera remote and waited for my wife to return. I nearly jumped out of my seat when the garage door slammed. As I pressed the record button on the remote control, I tried to be as calm as possible. Amy rushed out of the kitchen with her bag in tow. Oh my God, what a crazy ride, she said with excitement. Yes, I bet. I tried to call you. My phone is broken. I dropped it, and it just shattered. The last time I spoke to you, I didn't hear you very well. It sounded like you had met the star of the series and used your pass. Yes, we were at the club, and Joshua Morrow came to our table. You know the star on my soap. We danced a few times and started talking about our agreement to get into the hall. Damn, he's so hot. He said he wanted me to use my pass on him. That's why I called you. He had all the hot actresses and he wanted me. Can you believe it? He took me to his house and, well, you probably don't need the details. No, no, tell me how he had sex with my wife. Amy hasn't sensed that I'm angry yet. Oh, yes, he was experienced. He knows how to treat a woman's body. He said he took one of those pills. Damn it, you'll have to try. It lasted forever. Damn, he was good. Those stories you hear about these stars being good at sex are true. Amy was simply dizzy as she told her story. Finally, she noticed the anger on my face. Mark, are you okay? No, that's not true. My wife is standing here in my living room confessing to adultery, and she can't contain her giddy feeling about having sex with another man. Adultery? What are you talking about, Mark? This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Joshua was my ticket to the gym. I thought you would be happy that I was able to make my dream come true. Should I be happy that you broke our wedding vows? I didn't break our wedding vows. I took the day off to live out my fantasy. 
It was similar to what our friends did. I just used my hall pass. Concern appeared on Amy's face. No, Amy. It was just a game. And I made it very clear that it was just a game. I told you that I would never break our marriage vows and I would not tolerate you doing so. If you had a chance to be with a celebrity, I would be all for it. I don't understand why you can't just be happy that I had an experience I'll never forget. Don't worry. I'll never forget either. I'm sure the family you forgot about will never forget either. I walked up to Amy, grabbing her hand. I took the wedding ring off her finger. Did you make love to him without taking the wedding ring off your finger? This symbol of our love and devotion to each other? We didn't make love, we had sex. Yes, I didn't take it off. I was going to take it off, but Joshua wanted me to keep it. I'm sure he did it. He wanted to make fun of your marriage and took advantage of you, knowing that you were a married woman. Amy stood with her hand on her hip. This was her angry pose. I don't know why you attach great importance to this. It was only two nights. What? Should I take you upstairs to make amends? Thanks, but no thanks. Let me ask. Soapy Boy didn't use a condom, did he? Oh, no. Amy was angry. But now my question confused her. You allowed a man to have unprotected sex? A man who has had sex with over a hundred women, and, given that he's a TV star, probably some men, too. I wonder what Hollywood disease he gave you. Amy gasped. He may have given you something else if you didn't take the pills. You didn't take the pills, did you? No, you know that I don't need it, because you had it. Oh, my God. Amy gasped it again. Hey, just think about it. You might be carrying a TV star's baby. Amy was clearly doing the math in her head. No, I had my period last week, so I'm protected until the end of this week. It's funny how you're just thinking about it now. Mark, you attach too much importance to this. Too big? So, you are saying that I should not make a mountain out of a molehill because my wife commits adultery and abandons her family. Amy stomped her feet. I told you it wasn't adultery. I used my hall pass. I called you and even told you that I was using it. There's a problem, Amy. You use something that doesn't exist. I never gave you permission to walk away from our marriage and destroy our family. Stop being dramatic. I really thought you would be happy for me. I guess I was wrong. I'm done talking about this. Where are the kids? They are with my parents. I didn't want them here discussing our divorce. What? What do you mean by divorce? Are you going to divorce me because of this? No, 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 we are not getting divorced. As calmly as possible, I simply looked into Amy's eyes. You made your choice, now I will make mine. Bullshit, are you telling me you're going to leave our family because of this? It's not a big deal, and you'll just have to deal with it, Amy shouted. After finishing the conversation, I calmly went upstairs to the guest bedroom, locking the door behind me. For over an hour, Amy knocked on the door, telling me we needed to talk. Silence was my answer. I got up early and left the house before Amy woke up. As I pulled up to my parents' house, I discovered that my father was awake while the others were sleeping. Over a cup of coffee, I told my dad the whole story. Dad just listened not saying a word, until I finished. When I got to the end, he just looked at me. What a bitch. Dad, can I ask you what you would do in my situation? Son, you have to understand that everything was different before. Looks like this shit is acceptable now. If your mother did what your wife did, I would put a bullet in her forehead. But you have to do what you have to do. Dad, I don't think I can get past this. She knew how I felt about infidelity. Hell, I thought she felt the same way. What about that prenuptial agreement her mom made us sign? Amy told me that her mother caught Amy's father cheating on him several times and wanted to protect her daughter. Amy seemed to have completely forgotten about it. My dad laughed. I'm sure you're going to remind her. Oh, yes, but not right away. I want to see what she will do. She keeps saying it's nothing special and I just need to come to my senses. Dad, I really don't believe she regrets what she did or that she did anything wrong. Just after 10, my phone started blowing up. Amy called and texted wanting to know where I was. 
When I didn't answer, she called the children. Julie, our daughter, came into the kitchen yawning. Dad, Mom wants to know where you are and why you're not answering her calls. Darling, what did she tell you? Funny, that's exactly what she asked me. She wanted to know what you told us. What's happening to you? Are you cheating on her or is she cheating on you? Damn, she's insightful. Dad intervened. Oh crap, Mom cheated on you, didn't she? I think you should ask your mother this question. I didn't want to be accused of setting her up. I knew Julie would be very upset with her mother. Julie, being the stubborn teenager she is, pulled out her phone and put it on speaker. Dad is here. Did you cheat on him? Julie, what are you talking about? Whatever he said is not true. What did your father tell you? He didn't tell me anything, Mom. I can read it in his face. You cheated on him, didn't you? No, I didn't do it. And if he tells you that I did, it will be a lie. Okay, Mom. You seem guilty to me. Julie pressed end on her phone. I'm sorry, Dad. I can't believe she did this to you. I'm guessing you're planning to divorce her. You always preached honesty and morality. I don't blame you if she cheated on you. Julie turned around with a grim expression on her face and walked back upstairs. Your child has a good head on his shoulders. Mature beyond her years, she'll handle it just fine, said Dad. I'm not sure I'll be a dad, I said. Thirty minutes later, there was a loud knock on the front door. I heard my dad outside the door say, Amy, I'm really sorry, but you're not welcome in our house today. Mr. Butler, I don't know what your son told you, but he made it all up. I did not do anything. No matter what you say, Amy, you're still not welcome here. Tell him I didn't do anything. And if he says I did, he'll be in trouble, Amy blurted out. She seemed angry, I told Dad when he returned to the kitchen. Be careful, son. I saw that look. She won't give up easily. This woman looks like a cat driven into a corner. She's going to lie and claw her way out. I hope you can prove what she did. She looks ready for a fight. Amy was silent when the kids and I returned home later that day. That night, I slept in the guest room again. Nobody knocked on the door. The kids went to school and I sat at the kitchen table sipping coffee. I decided it was time to meet Amy face to face. She walked into the kitchen as if she didn't care at all. Did the children have a good rest? I nodded as she poured herself some coffee. Darling, why are you sleeping in the guest room? Are you feeling well? You know why, I don't want to sleep next to my cheating wife. Cheating wife? Mark, what are you talking about? So, I guess you're going to deny that you had sex with the star of the show while you were out of town last week? Mark, I don't know what you're up to. She turned and looked into my eyes with an angry look. You accuse me of something you cannot prove, and I will make you pay dearly. You know you can't prove anything. This is it, a declaration of war. No. We can go back to the way things were, but that's up to you. I am ready to forget all unfounded accusations. I'm sorry, but I can't forget what you did. I'm going to say it again. I didn't do anything, and more importantly, you can't prove that I did anything. You'll regret it if you try to say I did anything. Let it go, and let's continue our marriage. I knew the threat when I heard it. I didn't say anything, I just stood up and walked to my car as if I was going to work. I drove down the street, waiting for Amy to go to her school, where she was the vice principal. As soon as she left, I returned to the house. Taking Amy's words to heart, I entered the house looking for clues. If it was a war, I wanted to get as much ammunition as possible. Jenny mentioned that Amy got Soapy Boy's autograph. Was she going to deny her affair? I thought something like that would be too big a trophy to get rid of. She would hide it. It took me two hours of searching, but I finally found it. Amy had an old briefcase in the back of the closet on her side. It was locked, but she always uses the same code for all her briefcases. Below, under several folders, I found a photo. It was a standard promotional photo of a soap boy. The signature was modest. To my friend Amy, Joshua Morrow. On the back was another signature. You were a great lover, Joshua. I looked at the photo before putting it back. The next stop was a lawyer. Before leaving, I placed a copy of the scanned copy of our prenuptial agreement 
a recording of Amy's friend's phone call, and my recording of Amy's confession onto two flash drives. The lawyer I visited was well known for her relentless attacks on cheating spouses. In the world of divorce, Vicki Sampson was known as the bitch. I told my story about what Amy did. When I finished telling her about the situation and how I wanted it to go, she just sat back and smiled. I like it. You're cruel. Set a trap and set it when there is no turning back. It will be temporarily inconvenient until we show the evidence. Everyone will think you're lying or crazy. Let her think she will win until the very end. Mrs. Sampson shook my hand. I will prepare the documents and order her to be served at the school. You need to do a couple of things for me. First, check your credit card bills. We need to find out the club where she slept with her soap star. Second, get access to her iCloud. I bet there's a selfie of her and Joshua in there. She's probably smart enough to remove anything incriminating from the phone and upload it to a safe place. If you're lucky, there might be a copy on her cloud. Rushing home, I quickly sat down at her computer. I didn't even have to try to get into iCloud. Hidden in her photo folder were the three photos I was looking for. Two pictures of Amy and Soap Boy and one of Amy, Soap Boy and her friend Jenny. I copied the photos to a flash drive. A quick look at the photos gave me the name of the club, which was written on the wall behind them. My lawyer was very pleased with my finding. She told me that under no circumstances should I tell anyone that we had photographs. Her plan was to serve Amy at school on Friday afternoon. This would give me time to take the kids to their parents for the weekend. She also told me that I should not move out of the house, no matter what Amy said or did. That Friday, I had just dropped the kids off at my parents' house when my phone rang. I let it go to voicemail and ignored her messages. I hadn't been home even ten minutes when she burst in. I was sitting in the living room turning on the video camera when I heard the garage door slam. I didn't want to miss any incriminating statements. You son of a bitch. What the hell are you allowing yourself to do? I started to answer, but she cut me off. You just couldn't let it go, could you? What is it, Mark? Is your little man ego damaged? You humiliated me in front of my employees, and are you going to divorce me? I'll do it, but you'll pay. You know you can't prove the adultery you brought into the divorce, and without that, I'm going to take everything you have from you. I hope you're happy. You could just let it go. Does it bother you that I had great sex with a celebrity? You could have just let me have a good time, but no. Well, screw you. Amy stomped around while I sat, not saying a word. She returned to the living room with fire in her eyes. When are you moving? I'm not going to move out. I'm staying here. Oh no, that's not true. If you want a divorce, you'll have to move out. She looked at me for a few moments, expecting me to get up, but I just sat there and smiled. Okay, when this is all over, you'll regret that you didn't just shut your mouth and let us move on. The next month was very busy. Amy and I didn't talk. The children slowly approached Amy. Julie even wondered if her mother was actually cheating. Amy told anyone who would listen that I was making it all up. Her attorney filed a response to our motion, asking for sanctions for false statements. She even tried to get the court to kick me out of the house. This was rejected. The court expedited our hearing and both sides were given limited time to testify and question witnesses. My lawyer interviewed both Amy and her friend Jenny. They both denied Amy had moved on with the soap star and denied they had even met him or gone to the club. In preparing to testify... My lawyer told me that it was imperative that I tell the truth, but not offer any additional information. She hoped their lawyer wouldn't ask about the evidence we'd gathered about Amy's affair, thinking we didn't have it. As Mrs. Sampson had predicted, she hammered it into my head that I had not witnessed any deception on the part of my wife, but did not ask if there was any evidence of her deception. I was under the impression that her lawyer didn't know that Amy actually did what I accused her of. At the trial itself, I'm sure Amy thought everything was going great. I testified about Amy's infidelity, sharing my feelings about the adultery and objecting to being allowed into the audience. I was cross-examined on the same issues in the deposition. Yes, I was not present at her conference and did not see her doing anything with other men. Amy testified that she did nothing and, like me, was against adultery and would never condone the concept of a hall pass. 
Amy's lawyer subpoenaed Jenny to testify that the meeting with the soap star never took place. I looked at her husband, Jack, who was in the courtroom while she testified. He lowered his head to avoid my gaze. Jenny started fidgeting when my lawyer asked her about Jack's call and her saying that Amy had left with the soap star. Clearly nervous now, she stuck to the story, insisting it didn't happen. When Jenny sat down, Amy and her lawyer had smug looks on their faces. Amy's lawyer stood up and began to argue that they wanted sanctions for our false statements. The judge began to chastise my lawyer for not proving the claims we made. With a smile on her face, Mrs. Sampson stood up. Sorry, judge, we have irrefutable evidence. Amy's lawyer snapped. I object. We were not notified of the evidence. We are not obliged to disclose evidence. If their witnesses were telling the truth, there would be no need for retractions. The judge smiled and told Mrs. Sampson to continue. Mrs. Sampson called her investigator to testify. Judge, before we continue, we acknowledge that Mrs. Butler did not have sex with Joshua Morrow. I couldn't believe what I heard, but Mrs. Sampson looked at me to shut up and wait. The lawyer called her investigator, who testified that Joshua Morrow had been in Europe that week. Amy's lawyer jumped up. With this admission that my client did not commit adultery, we demand that this farce stop and force the court to impose sanctions on Mr. Butler, Mrs. Sampson with a wide smile on her face. No, we are not saying that she did not commit adultery. We're just saying it wasn't with Joshua Morrow. Jenny was called to the stand. My lawyer asked her again if she was with Amy at the conference and if they met with who they thought was Joshua Morrow. She denied it again. Jenny was again asked if she called her husband and told him that Amy had gone out with a man who was not her husband. Even after being reminded that she was under oath, Jenny denied making the call. I turned to look at her husband, who mouthed, I'm so sorry. My lawyer played the recording of Jenny's call. Amy's lawyer jumped in to object to the recording. Mrs. Sampson said, Judge, my client was an invited guest at the witness's house and was allowed to listen to the call. The judge told the lawyer to sit down and ask Jenny if it was really her voice. She had no choice but to admit that it was so. I began to feel vindicated when evidence finally emerged that I was telling the truth. Amy was called to the stand. Amy again denied that when she returned home from her trip, she admitted to having sex with another man. She gasped loudly when a video appeared of her describing sex with Joshua Morrow. Amy was in tears when the selfie and signed promotional photo were presented as evidence. As Amy left the witness stand, the judge turned to Mrs. Sampson. Counsel, I'm confused. You said Mrs. Butler didn't have sex with Joshua Morrow, but you just presented evidence that she did. Mrs. Sampson called her investigator over. Judge, we have proven that Mrs. Butler committed adultery, but just not with who she thought she was with. The investigator posted photographs from surveillance cameras from the club. Several photographs showed Amy and the man she left the club with. He pointed to the photographs. This is not Joshua Morrow. This man likes to pick up married women. He is a known fraudster who has been diagnosed with several sexually transmitted diseases. At this point, I just needed to look at Amy. The look of shock on her face was priceless. After a short break, the judge returned to his seat. He gave a long speech about honesty and loyalty. The judge ruled that Amy had committed adultery, as stated in the prenuptial agreement. He ruled in my favor, upholding the prenuptial agreement. The judge lectured Amy about how, even if there was no prenup, he would have awarded me custody of the children. For the record, he deemed Amy an unsuitable mother because of her persistent attempts at deception. With tears in her eyes, Amy turned from the lawyer's desk to leave. Mrs. Butler, stay where you are. We are not finished yet. The judge called Jenny into the dock to join the army. You both raised your right hands and swore to tell the truth in the courtroom. This oath is sacred in this building. He looked straight at Jenny. I don't care if you have some mistaken belief that you were helping your friend. A lie is a lie in a courtroom. If this were a criminal case, you both would be in prison now. I find that you both committed perjury, and I charge you both with contempt of court. The judge fined them both the maximum fine of $5,000. Amy's bad day took a turn for the worse when she walked out of the courthouse to have a local news crew point a camera in her face. Later, I found out that the lawyer warned them. 
Mrs. Butler, do you have a comment about abandoning your family for a one-night stand with a fake TV star? The reporter's question was the straw that broke Amy's back. Amy let out a blood-curdling scream and then attacked the reporter. It was a blur of arms and legs when Amy hit the reporter. Amy took her to the ground and pulled her hair as the deputy was forced to use a stun gun. The cameraman filmed the entire episode on video. Amy was on every national newscast that night. Unfortunately, Amy didn't get to see her best moment. She was locked up in the county jail, where she remained for the next six months. No, I didn't have a beautiful blonde lined up to take Amy's place. I was too busy raising two children while now being a single parent. And no, I didn't reconnect with Amy when she got out of prison, although she tried. My mother felt sorry for her and asked her to give her another chance, but not me. Amy lost her career and became the butt of jokes throughout the city. Three months after Amy called and texted me, I agreed to meet her at her mom's house. I sat silently and listened to Amy tell me how much she loved and missed me. She missed being part of our family. As a result of her arrest and conviction for assault, she was allowed only limited supervised visits with her children. Amy said she was sorry she had lied about what she called her affair and was so embarrassed it turned out she had been scammed by a scammer. She ended by begging me to take her back, saying that she would be the best wife in the world. I stood up and took a deep breath. Amy, that was a passionate speech. I believe you mean every word. You apologized for lying. You said you missed our family. You said you loved me. I believe you. I really think so. But what you didn't say is most eloquent. You never said you were sorry or even showed any remorse for breaking our wedding vows. I think you regretted that you didn't end up having sex with the guy of your dreams. I don't believe you regret cheating on me, or even that it was cheating. The answer to your question is no, and hell no. I won't take you back now or ever. I want you to stop contacting me, period. If you don't do this, I will extend the restraining order that was issued when you were arrested. Amy stood up, crying. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I had sex with that guy. And yes, I liked it. I'm really sorry I liked it. Is this what you wanted to hear? Amy, we're done. Go and live your life. This won't happen to me. I turned and walked out the door. Amy was screaming at me, and her mom was having a hard time holding Amy back. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.